All right, everyone. Welcome back to the land of Kem. I am your host and the author. My name is Jeffrey Drum. Thank you all so much for joining me again. All right, everyone, welcome back. This is episode 42, Methane and the Step Pyramid. So in today's episode, I will be discussing the uses for the methane gas that was once being collected from the Step Pyramid of Saqqara. This is the first in a highly requested series of episodes that will explain the uses for the chemicals being produced inside of the Egyptian pyramids. The methane from the Step Pyramid, the ammonia from the Red Pyramid, the ammonium bicarbonate from the Bent Pyramid of Dashur, the sulfuric and hydrochloric acids from the Great and Central Pyramids of Giza, respectively, and I recently presented an episode explaining the uses for the ferrous sulfate that was being produced in the passage chamber structures of Ireland, such as Newgrange, episode 29, the chemicals of the Tuatha So I will also be presenting some connections between the mysterious Serapium of Saqqara and ancient methane production, as well as a prelude to an upcoming episode the Chemical Analysis of the Red Pyramid Staining, Part 2. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, we are just getting started here on the Land of Chem, and each new episode will continue to reveal more details about the function of these structures that I have not yet discussed. So please subscribe to the Land of Chem here on YouTube, click that little notification bell so that you get noticed when the new videos premiere every single week. If you want to help support the channel, check out www.thelandofchem.com. You can pick up a limited first edition print copy of the book, grab yourself a Land of Chem t-shirt. Either way, all of the orders mean so much to me. Thank you all so much for your support. Leave a comment below if you have any questions, comments, feedback, and let me know what you think of this material. If you find this interesting, please share this everywhere you can and help me grow this channel. Thank you all so much for your positivity and encouragement. I do this because I love it, but I also do this for you. So ladies and gentlemen, I think that's it for the intro. Without further ado, let's get right to it. All right, everyone, here we go with tonight's episode. So my theory contained within the first chapter or the first degree of the Land of Chem book is that the Step Pyramid of Saqqara that you can see here was collecting methane gas. And you can check out episode 37 here on the channel to see an animation of exactly how this process worked. So now we are inside the Serapium of Saqqara, which according to the conventional narrative is a burial site for the cattle associated with the cult of the Apis Bull. The cult of the Apis Bull, huh? Conventional archaeology just loves vague words and phrases like quote-unquote cult because they have absolutely no idea what these groups really were. I would propose that this was in fact a society of initiated chemists that were producing this sacred methane gas from the manure that was collected from these deified animals, a process that I have explained became symbolically represented by the scarab beetle. And it is no coincidence that this site is located in very close proximity to the step pyramid where that methane gas was being produced. So this gas produces a beautiful blue flame, which you can see here on the left. And the knowledge and uses of methane gas date back all the way to the ancient world, even according to conventional history and archeology. span and of course, it wouldn't be a Land of Chem episode without explaining an esoteric symbol related to ancient chemistry. And you can see here the sacred flame symbol that has been incorporated in the esoteric writings of all ages, which superficially represents the spiritual flame that dwells within. However, this quote unquote sacred flame is also directly connected to methane gas, and we will see evidence in the historical record taking us back all the way to the ancient Middle East. So now here we are circa 1000 BCE and the Oracle at Delphi was built on a natural gas seep that emanated from the ground in a flame. So we also have the first known observations of methane gas were made in Iran circa 2000 BCE and provided the eternal fires for the fire worshiping religion of the ancient Persians. So this fire and the methane itself were regarded as divine or supernatural. Hence, the deification of cattle across the ancient world, as I've shown in previous episodes. And circa 500 BCE, 
the ancient Chinese were transporting the methane gas in bamboo pipelines for domestic purposes. So I would propose that the ancient civilization that built the Egyptian pyramids also knew about methane gas and were using it for similar purposes. So that is use number one for the methane gas. Domestic purposes like heating, boiling water, lighting, etc. One example, of course, being a methane lamp. And historical documents have shown that leather bladders were filled with methane gas, a hole was cut into the container, and escaping gas was lit. And these lamps could be useful for an entire day. So what we're looking at here, ladies and gentlemen, is not lost ancient high technology, but simple, practical ancient chemistry. So next up, the second use for the methane gas, syngas. Methane is still being utilized today, as it was in the ancient world, for the production of other chemicals, specifically as I have presented in many episodes here on the channel as the initial reactant or syngas for the production of ammonia inside of the Red Pyramid of Dashur. So that is use number two for the methane gas, syngas for the production of other industrial chemicals. But keep in mind, methane isn't just used for making ammonia. It can also be used to create pure hydrogen and other chemicals like methanol and formaldehyde. Now, anyone who knows anything about chemistry, I should now have your very close attention because formaldehyde is, of course, utilized in, drumroll, embalming. <laughs> More on that in a later episode. So subscribe to the Land of Chem here on YouTube and stay tuned. And just a quick reminder that brand new Land of Chem merch is finally available at thelandofchem.com. These new logos are absolutely fire. A raw image for the central pyramid of Giza featuring the alchemical symbol for hydrochloric acid inside of the structure. And don't forget about the OG second degree logo, a symbol representing the red pyramid of Dashur featuring molecular ammonia inside of the structure. Those logos were designed by yours truly, now available at thelandofchem.com. And don't forget, limited first edition print copies of the book, the Land of Chem, an initiation into ancient chemistry through the degrees of the Egyptian pyramids, also now available at thelandofchem.com. So if you want to help support the channel, just go to the website. You can grab a copy of the book, pick up a t-shirt. Either way, all of these orders mean the world to me. So thank you all so much for your support. All right, everyone. Now, last but not least, use number three for the methane gas is metallurgy. So this captivating blue methane flame burns at a temperature of approximately 1,950 degrees Celsius. This high temperature flame would have been incredibly useful in a variety of metallurgical applications, but also has some critical industrial applications. So remember, 1,950 degrees Celsius as we review the melting points of several metals. So here we have copper, 1,084 degrees C. Gold, 1,063 degrees C. Antimony, 1,167 degrees C. Strontium, 777 degrees C. Chromium, 1,907 degrees C. And iron, 1,593 degrees Celsius. And this is an image of meteoric iron that I will be getting to here in just a moment. So now any of you that have been following my work and paying close attention will immediately recognize some of the metals that I just mentioned being present in the chemical analysis of the red pyramid stating. So just keep in mind as we proceed that burning methane is hot enough to melt all of those metals for both metallurgical and also other industrial applications. And even the dynastic Egyptians were smelting meteoric iron, which you can see here in the iron dagger of King Tut. And clearly, the civilization that built the Egyptian pyramids also knew about iron and were working with it. As you can see here, the prolific deposits of iron ore that are found across every single site in Egypt. And working with this metal would have certainly been a lot easier if they had implemented a high temperature methane flame. And of course, ladies and gentlemen, the staining inside of the Red Pyramid. Now, you may recall that I have not yet finished explaining all of the mechanisms involved in the operation of this structure, nor have I finished explaining the perplexing chemical analysis of the black material extruding from the stones inside of these chambers. 
So just remember the temperatures that I have presented today. Subscribe to the Land of Chem here on YouTube and stay tuned. All right, everyone, that is it for today's video. This was episode 42, Methane and the Step Pyramid. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. In the next episode, I will be discussing the uses for the ammonia solution that was once being produced inside of the Red Pyramid of Dashur. I will also be going into a little bit further detail explaining the mysterious, rare, and exotic metals that we have found in the chemical analysis of the Red Pyramid staining. This is an episode you do not want to miss, so stay tuned. If you haven't already, please subscribe to The Land of Chem here on YouTube. Click that little notification bell. New videos premiere every single week. So thank you all so much for joining. If you want to help support the channel, www.thelandofchem.com. You can pick up a copy of the book. Grab yourself some of this new Fire Land of Chem merch. Thank you all so much for your support. I think that is it for today's episode, so I will see you next time.